صباح الخير محاضرة النهاردة هي Introduction لل Breast Ultrasound Lexicon ال Breast Ultrasound يعني very widely used والحقيقة ان احنا بس محتاجين حاجة بسيطة جدا في التكنيكال وال Ultrasound Descriptors علشان ال Rappers بتاعتنا تبقى Standardized في أي مكان ال Rappers هيوصل لدكتور كلينيشن اناذر كوليج راديولوجيست هيبقى فاهم بالظبط احنا قصدنا ايه وحاجه مهمه جدا في كلمه لكسيكن اللي هي زي فوكابلري تيرمينولوجي ان احنا نقول بالظبط بالظبط نفس الترم ما نغيرش فيه لو احنا ابتدينا احنا يعني يعني المحاضره بسيطه جدا بس يعني احنا هنشوف احنا ماشيين فيها حبه حبه لو زودت حاجه في البراكتس ليكو دي الحاجه اللي احنا هتبقى يعني انتوا تقولوا لي هي ممكن تكون زودت لكم ايه او يعني اكدت على نفس الشغل بتاعك احنا بنستخدم الدينير هاي فريكونسي ترانسديوسر اول حاجه بنسالها ان المريضه لما تدخل ان هي هي بتشتكي من ايه دي حاجه مهمه جدا لان الالتراساوند احنا بنتعامل مع المريضه دايركتلي ولو في بالبابل فايندينج احنا بنذكر بيشنت ان هي تو لوكيت وتشاور عليه ودي حاجه مهمه جدا وهنفهمها ليه بعد كده علشان لما الاقي اي فايندنج اي شود سي ان ذس فايندنج از كورسبوندنج ل البالبابل ليجن او الاريا اوف كونسيرن بتاعه البيشنت ولا الفايندنج دي حاجه والاريا اوف كونسيرن بتاعه البيشنت اللي هي حساها وجايه تشتكي منها دي حاجه ثانيه خالص وده مجرد مثلا جلاندولر تيشو وانا بقى لقى مثلا عند الساعه 10 وانا لقيت حاجه تانية خالص عند الساعه 2 وهي دي سسبيشس او المشكله و اي شود ستيت ذس ان ماي ريكورد بحيث ان لما ترجع تاني للكلينيشن هيبقى فاهم الحاجه اللي هي حساها او الحاجه المشكله اللي هو حاسسها مش هي دي ودي المشكله اللي انا لقيتها في حته تانية خالص و... طب انا ما لقيتش حاجه خالص في البالبابل اريا دي ممكن برضو استيت ان انا البالبابل اريا او الاريا اوف كونسيرن اي فاوند اونلي جلاندولر تيشو بحيث ان انا برضو ابقى موضحه للكلينيشن ان انا خدت بالي ان هي شيز بالبيتنج سامثينج او الحاجه اللي حضرتك باعت بتسال عليها فعلا از نوت اوف كونسيرن وهي مجرد جلاندولر البيشنت بتنام سوباين والهاندز بتاعتها اوفر هيد عشان تاوبن الاجزله عشان نيكزام لو البريست از باندلس We can uh, tilt the patient right or left علشان نأكزامن all of the breast. ممكن نعمل fine adjustment لل TGC. اللي هي هنا كده. علشان uh, نظبط الصورة بتاعتنا و uh, we have to برضو ان احنا نعمل printing و storing. للايمجز بتاعه الفايندنجز عشان تبقى دوكيومنت الالتراساوند سكاني يعني احنا لو بدانا بالاجزلا بتبقى حاجه فيري بينيفيشال ان احنا ما نبقاش بعد كده واحنا لقينا اي فايندنج في البريست والبيشنت تقوم واحنا نسينا نعمل الاجزلا احنا اور اور مايند كله كان في الفايندنجز لقينا مثلا لقيتي 70 فايبرو ادينوما وقاعده تعدي فيهم واماكنهم وكده ونسيتي تبصي على الاجزله ودي حاجه اساسيه في فحص البريست الترسون بنمشي ريديال سكان من اول 12 كلوك ونمشي ريديال من اوتسايد لحد النيبل اريا كومبلكس وبعدين ممكن نعمل تاني برضو ترانسفيرس ونعمل ساجيتال كل ده ليه؟ ليه نعمل ده كله؟ علشان لان البريست التراساوند ده 
يعني اوبريتور ديبندنت فلما نبقى اوبريتور ديبندنت لازم ان انا لو انا ده معتمد عليا اتراي ماي بيست ان انا ادو نوت ميس سمثينج ان ذا بريست اوكي وبرده بتفيدني في حاجه ثانيه ان انا ما اعدش الليجن مرتين يعني ما جالهاش مثلا من عند 1 واشوفها ثاني عند 2 اقول جي 1 ليجن وجي 2 ليجن انما لما امشي بكذا طريقه هقول ان دي ليجن واحده مهما قابلتها من كذا كلوك تاني حاجه مهمه جدا برضو ان انا احنا اتفقنا ان احنا بنمشي انتي ريجن اوكي يعني بناخد الترانسديوسر فروم اوت سايد لحد النبل طيب بس اول ما الاقي فايندنج لازم الف البروب بتاعي بيربنديكولر لنفس ال 90 درجة علشان يبقى انتي ريجل وكده ابقى شفت الليجن في 3 دي يعني كل الدايمنشنز بمعنى ايه؟ بمعنى الليجن دي لو انا عامله لها كروس سكشن كده هتبان بالطريقة دي انما لما افرد عليها هيحصل ايه؟ شفت الفول لانس بتاعها زي هنا شايفين لما الريجل من الانتي ريجل ده كده سوري معلش عقبال ما احفظ بس البوينتر فين بالظبط انا اسف ده الكروس سكشن اول ما لفيت عليها ايه اللي حصل شايفين الايه ايه اللي حصل ان انا اللمس بتاعي والشيب بتاعي اختلف تماما طيب لو انا قلت ان الـ ان الفايبرو ادينوما 2 سنتيمتر او قلتها 3 سنتيمتر هيفرق في المانجمنت ايه رايك يا دكتور هيفرق صح ليه لان من اول 3 سنتيمتر ممكن يبقى السيرجن ها يعوز ان هو يعمل لها سيرجيكال اكسيجن انما اقل من 3 ممكن ما تبقاش انديكيتد طيب في لو مليك دنت ليجن ها في الستيجنج احنا عندنا بالسنتيمتر بالظبط ها من 1 ل 2 ومن 2 ستيج 1 ستيج ستيج 1 ستيج 2 من 2 تو 5 اكتر من 5 تدخل في ستيج اكبر فاحنا عشان كده فيري فيري امبورتنت ان احنا نقول بز... نحاول نوصل للاكزاكت ميجرمنت بتاع الليجن ب الريجل والانتي ريج آه برضو ان احنا بنقول هاو سنتيمترز من نيبل ولو آه عرفنا ان احنا نقول اذا كانت في الانتيرور او الميدل او البوستيرور سيرج وهي ساعات بتتقال بالزونز زون اي وزون بي وزون سي آه بحيث ان هي لو هو فيري بيج بريست ونفس البيشنت دي راحت للدوكلينيشن او راحت لكوليج يبقى عارف اراوند فين الابر اوتر كوادرنت ممكن يبقى كبير جدا انما لما انا ليميتد ل اريا اكتر انتيري او ميدل او بوستيري هيبقى احسن ودي تقسيمه الزونز اللي هي الاي وبي وسي ودي تقسيمه الكلوكس اللي احنا بنقول بيها بالالتراساوند ان احنا المفروض يبقى البروب انتي ريجل كده وابقى شايفه الليجن تحت بالظبط 12 او كلوك او تحت 3 في ممكن اقول ايه كمان ممكن اقول ان الليجن لو كانت كبيره اقولها فروم 12 تو 2 او كلوك اوكي او فبحيث ان انا ابقى دقيقه جدا في الموضوع طيب بيفضل لنا الريترو اريال ريجن بتبقى فيها مشكله شويه ان الدنيا النيبل طالعه او داخله لجوه اكتر ايه الحاجه اللي ممكن تساعدنا في الموضوع ده يا اما احط جيل كتير حوالين النيبل زي الصوره اللي تحت ان انا الجيل فبشوف النيبل اول اراوند يبان لي حتى لو في ليجن في النيبل نفسه بقدر اشوف او لو انا عايزه اشوف الريترو اريلر اكتر برضو ممكن اعمل يا اما مور كومبريشن بجل او اعمل رولد نيبل او اعمل اوبليك اورينتيشن عشان اشوف الريترو اريلر اريا ما تغير ما تبقى فيها شادوينج كتير طيب مراجعه بسيطه للنورمال بريست تيشو انا بشوفه ازاي بشوف اول حاجه تو لاينز ايكوجينيك وجواها فيري هايبو اكوك ما تكونش اكتر من 2 ملم دي السكن بعدها بيبقى السبكوتينيس فات 
بيبقى رازر هوموجينس هايبو كولد بعد كده بشوف ستين ايكوجينيك لاينز ماشيه مع بعضها وماشيه فيري سموث وكونتينيوس دي بتبقى الكوبرز ليجمنت والفايبرز ليجمنت وممكن يبقى جلانجلر تيشو يبقى مور اوكوجينيك وزين ذس فايبرز فيبقى بنسميها الفايبرو جلاندلر تيشو بعديه ممكن يبقى في ريترو ماموري فات تاني بعد كده يبقى في اللي هو المسلز والريبس تبقى باينه فيري هايبو كوك وعامله شادو ده منظر تاني بالظبط هو هو بتاع النورمال براس طيب لو قلنا ان هو ان احنا النهارده بنتكلم عن البايراد لكسيكان اللي هو مين لي 2013 هو رجع تاني حصل له ابديت 2018 بس يعني ما حصلش اختلاف جامد في الالتراساوند والمامو حاجات بسيطه واتفقنا ان لكسيكان يعني ديكشنري او كابل طيب في حاجه تانيه الناس اراوند ذا وورد يعني بيستخدموا حاجه تانيه غير البايراد اه لو احنا حد مننا او من زمايلنا راح مثلا يشتغل في في انجلترا في عندهم انذر سيستم بيمشوا بيه فلو سمعنا محاضره للدكتور طبار هنلاقيه هو عامل جريدنج سيستم لوحده ففي اذر سيستم بس الموست كومن يوزد واللي هو مطبق في في الكلينيكال براكتس هنا في مصر هو الايه البايرات الاي سي ار بايرات الالتراساوند لكسيكان اول حاجه فيه بتبقى البريست كومبوزيشن ايزر هوموجينس فات او هوموجينس فايبرو جلانجلر او سي اللي هو هيتروجينس الماس ليها ديسكريبتورز واضحه شيب مارجن اورينتيشن ايكو باترن بوستيرير فيتشرز وكل واحده هنشوفها دلوقتي شكلها ازاي الكالسيفيكيشنز في اسوشيتد فيتشرز زي الاركتكشر ديستورشن داك تشينجز سكين سيكنينج skin retraction, edema, vascularity, elasticity uh, special cases دي اللي هي بتبقى شكل واضح محدد ده uh, uh, يعني أول ما نشوفه بنقوله باسمه احنا يا إما بنعمل الالتراساوند لوحده في سن uh, الصغيرين أو uh, لما بنعمل ماموجرافي بنعمل في الدايجنوستيك معاه الترساوند بعد ما بنطلع بقى كل الفايندنجز بتاعتنا بندي فاينل اسسمنت كاتيجوري بايرادز من 0 تو 6 على حسب الفايندنجز اللي احنا لقيناها والكلينيكال والهيستوري بتاع المريض طيب البريست كومبوزيشن زي ما احنا شايفين هنا لو هو كومبليتلي فاتي اللي هو اللي هو اللوبيولز الفات دي الهايبو كوك وفي بس مجرد سن ايكوجينيك لاينز اسمه فات دي فاتي اللي هو ايه لو هو فايبرو جلانجلر جامد زي ده بس هوموجينس فايبرو جلانجلر كله ايكوجينيك كده يبقى فايبرو جلانجلر لو هو هيتروجينس الاثنين في بعض هو ده اللي بنسميه سي وده الكوريليشن مع الماموجرافي ايزر الفات بيبان فات في الفاتي خالص في الـ في الـ في الماموجرافي او الجلانجلر او الهيتروجينس طيب المشكله الوحيده كل تيرمز دي غالبا اونلي يوز في سكريننج الترساوند هم كاتبين لنا كده ومش في دايجنوستيك سيتنج بس لو استخدمناه ما فيش اي مشكله الامبليكيشن اكتر حاجه امبليكيشن هنا بالنسبه لنا اللي هو الهيتروجينس باك جراوند لانه لما الايكو تكتشر بتبقى هيتروجينس وحته فيها هايب وحته فيها هايبر بتعمل لنا شادوينجز وممكن تماسك اي ليجن موجود فدي بتبقى اكتر حاجه بالنسبه لنا مشكله تمام فاحنا بنبقى حريصين جدا واحنا بنعمل اي بريست وحتى ممكن نقول ان هو بيقلل السنسيتيفيتي طيب بعد كده لو احنا اتكلمنا عن الماس بنقول الشيب مارجن 
orientation eco pattern posterior features كل ماس نلاقيها المفروض نكتب عنها كل ده ما ننساش ولا حاجة منها لو قلنا ان الشيب مثلا irregular لازم بعد كده نقول المارجن برضو يعني ما نكتفيش ان احنا لقينا قلنا ان الشيب irregular تمام لازم نقول مثلا المارجن uh, not circumscribed او speculated او indistinct الشيبس اللي هي بتبقى يا اما راوندد يا اما اوفل يا اما ريجل يبقى دول الثلاث اشكال للشيبس المعتمده راوندد اوفل ريجل وكل واحده منهم ممكن تبقى المارجن بتاعتها مختلفه يعني ممكن تبقى اوفل والمارجن لوبيليتد ممكن تبقى راوندد والمارجن بتاعتها يا اما سيركمسكرايبد يا اما اندستنكت الشيب غير المارجن طيب أمال المارجن يا إما سيركمسكرايد أنا أقدر أمشي عليه بالظبط وده اللي كان بيتقال عليه الويل well ديفايند طيب أنا لا يعني في تقرير مثلا ممكن أقولها ويل well ديفايند يعني ممكن مش إنما اللي هو لو أنا ماشي على الترمينولوجي بالظبط هي سيركمسكرايد طيب لو أنا قلت مايكرو لوبيليتد يبقى أنا عندي في عندي راوندد بروجكشنز عاملة لوبيليشنز الأنجلر معظمها بتبقى سيركمسكرايد بس عندي بوردرز عامله اكيوت انجلز اوكي فبنسميها ان هي ليها انجلر مارجنز لو هي اندستنكت يعني اللي هي كانت ايل ديفايند انا مش قادره احكم بالظبط المارجن امشي عليه بالقلم وامشي فده بنقولها اندستنكت سبيكيوليتد بتبقى اللي هو بقى اللي احنا عارفينها كلنا اللي هي الشمس ها سبيكيول سبيكيولز طالعه من الليش تاني ادي منظر الاندستنكت والمايكرو لوبيليتد والسبيكيوليتد وهو دول المارجن ده لو احنا خدنا بالنا هو اكتر حاجه بتعتمد عليها انا هقول الليجن دي سسبيشس ولا نوت سسبيشس فمهم جدا جدا مش كفايه يعني في ناس كتير تقول ما انا شايفاها يبقى هي خلاص كده سيركمسكرايب لا انا بعد ما بشوفها واشوف الشيب بتاعها اشوف المارجن بتاعتها يعني بكل دقه واحاول ان انا الف عليها كل اللف عشان اتاكد من كل المارجنز بتاعتها لان على اساس المارجن ده هو اللي هقول هي سسبيشس ولا لا الاورينتيشن ده حاجه بالنسبه للالترا ساوند هي مش موجوده في الماموجرافي ان هي ايزر بارالل للشيست وول ولا بيرفنديكولار على الشيست وول لو هي بارالل للشيست وول ده معناه ان هي تبقى ناحي ماشيه مع التيشوز ناحيه البنينتي انما لو هي بيرفنديكولار آه انتي بارالل تبقى ناحيه انها تكون مليئه طيب بس انا لو انا شايفاها فيري ويل سيركمسكرايب بس هي بس ماشيه يعني اورينتيشن بتاعها مور انتي بارالل مش هو ده بس اللي هحكم عليه انما من اذر فيتشرز كمان الايكو باترن ممكن تبقى انيكود زي السيستات كلها سودة خالص ممكن تبقى هايبو اكوك وده بالنسبة للبرينك ملفات يعني انا بقارن بالبرينك ملفات ممكن تبقى ايزو اكوك شبهه جدا هايبر اكوك اكتر منه ممكن تبقى هيتروجينوس يعني فيها الهايبر والهايبو ميكسد ايكوجينيستي البوستيريور فيتشرز ممكن يبقى لو هي وراها في ابيض اكتر ده بنسميه انهانسمنت بيعمل انهانسنج للالترا ساوند ويفز فتبقى ناحيه انها تكون سيست او حاجه بناين والباثولوجيكال باترن بتاعها فيري ريجولار فمخليها وراها انهانس لما تكون البوستيريور فيتشر بتاعها شادوينج يعني الالترا ساوند ويفز مش عارفه تدخل وبعد وحصل شادو وراها ناحيه انها تكون مالجنت والبات والباترن بتاعها مش ريجولار ناحيه انها تكون اكتر هاي جريد مالجنت او كالسيفيكيشن هندرينج الالترا ساوند ويفز ان هي تعدي وممكن يبقى ميكسد يعني في شويه انهانسد وشويه ان ايه شادو كده احنا اتكلمنا على الماس شيب مارجن اورينتيشن ايكو باترن بوستيريور فيتشرز هنتكلم على الكالسيفيكيشن الكالسيفيكيشن عموما في الالتراساوند مش هي دي البرايمري تشويس حتى لما اي مريضه تيجي بنقول لها تقول مثلا اعمل مامو سونار ولا سونار بس كفايه بنقول لها ايه 
لا ما ينفع انت حضرتك عندك 40 سنه لازم نعمل كمان المامو علشان السونار ممكن ما يشوفش الكالسيفيكيشن لو عندك اي تكلسات لازم نشوفها بالمامو ف الماموجرافي هو البرايمري والستاندرد ان هو يشوف الكالسيفيكيشن بس انا ساعات برضو في احيان كتير اقدر اشوف الكالسيفيكيشن كتايني دوتس اوف ايبوجينستس ممكن اشوفها لو هي جوه الماس بقدر اشوفها احسن لان بيبقى حواليها هايبو ايبوجينستي ولو هي في التيشز زي الارز البيضه اللي هي اللي موجوده دي ساعات ممكن اشوفها يا اما اراوند الماس يا اما ماشيه في لينير باترن بنسميها انتراداكتال اكستنشن وكلنا بنكتب احنا قلنا البريست كومبوزيشن الماس الكالسيفيكيشن فاضل لنا الاسوشيتد فيتشرز هنشوف كل اسوشيتد فيتشر ممكن نشوفه ازاي بالالتراساون الاركتكشر ديستوشن برضو الاركتكشر ديستوشن زي الكالسيفيكيشن البرايمري والستاندرد ليه بالماموجرافي بنشوف الاركتكشر ديستوشن احسن بالماموجرافي بس ممكن نشوفه بالالتراساون برضو لو اي سبيكليتد ماس ليجن بنقول ان هي عامله اركتكشر ديستوشن بمعنى ان الخطوط الايكوجينيك اللي هي كانت ماشيه في البارينكما سموثلي وبارلل لبعضها وماشيه مع بعضها بلاقيها اتغيرت لقيها اتشدت فاول ما يحصل الموضوع ده هو ده الاركتكشر ديستوشن اوكي طيب اي دكت تشينجز زي ما قلنا ازاي بنعمل ان احنا نشوف ريترو ايريال ريجن نلاقي الدكت ممكن تبقى دايليتد وبنقول انت انها دايليتد الدكت لو هي اكتر من 3 ملم لو هي اقل بنقولها برومنت ممكن نلاقي جواها انيكوك فلويد ها خلاص كده تبقى مجرد دكت اكتيزيا اكتر من 3 ملم طب لو لقينا جواها ايكوجينستس على حسب ساعات حتى يقول لك اعمل بلاتمنت يعني حركها كده شوفها هيتحرك ولا لا لو هما بيتحركوا يبقى دول مجرد انسبيسيتد سيكريشنز طب انا لو انا مش راضيين يتحركوا شغلت دوبلر لقيت جواهم فاسكولاريتي يبقى دول ناحيه انها تكون حاجه جراس الجراس ده ممكن يبقى بابيلوما او كارسينوما طيب عملت الدوبلر وبرده ما عرفتش الاقي حاجه ممكن احطها ناحيه بارادس ثلاثه واللي هي probably benign فيها 2% risk of malignancy لا يكون ال inspected secretions دي مغطية على حاجة ونديها short term follow up تجيلنا تاني يكون متأكدنا ان هي الدنيا مظبوط بعد كده ال skin changes احنا زي ما اتفقنا ال skin ما تبقاش اكتر من 2 ملم لو هي حصل فيها thickening لو حصل فيها كيجينستي لو حصل فيها زي اي inflammatory بويل كل ده بنقدر نشوفه وبنقول ان احنا عندنا كوتينيوس ليجن وبنقيسها وبنقول ونوصفها بالظبط ولو في اي ليجن قد ايه من السكن برضو المفروض ان احنا نريبورت الليجن دي مثلا خصوصا لو مالجنسي قد ايه من السكن او او هي انفولفنج السكن ولا لا علشان ده برضو بيفرق في الستيج طيب الاديما الانترستيشال اديما بتبان ازاي بتبان ان احنا بنلاقي اللي هو الفاتي لوبيولز دول بقوا مور ناحيه الايكوجينيك احنا كنا شايفينهم قبل كده هايبو كوت بنلاقيهم مور تورز انهم يبقوا ايكوجينيك وحواليهم فيري ثين هايبو كوك فلويدز ماشيه تريكلينج اراوند اللوبيولز هي دي اللي بنسميها انترستيشال ايديما هو انا فاضل لي قد ايه؟ نص ساعه تخلص؟ 25 minutes يخلصوا ده انا لسه طيب <تصفيق> هنتكلم على ال 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 هندخل بقى على طول على البايرات البايرات زيرو غالبا دي بتتقال مع الماموجرافي اكتر ومش بنقولها الا لو احنا محتاجين ماموجرافي مع الالتراساون طيب بارات 2 بنقولها لو هي حاجه كومبليتلي بناين زي السيست زي ادينوما احنا تابعنا عليها اكتر من سنتين زي الهامرتوما زي الانفليوتد فايبر ادينوما طيب بارات 3 زي ما اتفقنا يا اما الكومبليكيتد سيست يا اما ايه تاني اي سوليد ليجن شكلها ويل well سيركمسكرايب بس لسه شايفاه دي الاشكال بتاعتها او لقيت انفلاماتوري ليجن 
وعايزه احطها براتري لغايه لما تخف انزلها برات برات 4 دي فيري سسبيشس ابنورماليتي في الديسكريبتورز اللي احنا اتفقنا عليها ان هي في بروبابيليتي اوف مالجنسي ان هي ناحيه انها تكون اندستكت مارجن او سبيكوليتد و دول مناظر وبرده اللي هو الفيلويدز لا عشان في منه يبقى مالجنت برات 5 لو انا معايا سبيكوليتد ليجن ومعاها كالسيفيكيشن او معاها باثولوجيكال اكسلري لينف نوت برات 6 اللي هي باثولوجيكلي بروف اوكي طيب في حاجه بس اخر حاجه لو هي انا عندي اريا احنا بنقولها لغايه دلوقتي اريا في محاضره كامله هتتعمل عن النون ماس ليجنز اللي هي في ارتكلز كتير مسميينها نون ماس بتبقى لما بدل ما نقول اريا ها دلوقتي اعتمد اعتمد ان احنا ممكن نقولها نون ماس اريا بس وده الرابورت شكرا Our next, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Lamia, for your uh, nice presentation. And uh, now uh, uh, I'm inviting Professor Dr. Heba Azem. She is a professor of radiology, Cairo University, breast imaging and interventional consultant, radiology deputy training manager, presidential invitative on women's health. Her um, uh, lecture will be about non mass lesions on ultrasound. Thank you, Dr. Maha. طيب احنا النهارده هنتكلم عن ال non mass lesions في breast ultrasound. زي ما دكتوره لاميا شرحت لنا ان احنا ماشيين على التلمنولوجي بتاع ال ACR by RADS Atlas 2013. بس التيرمنولوجي ده ال description فيه لل ultrasound finding في breast موجود فيها بس mass والكالسيفيكيشنز والاسوشيتد فيتشرز اللي هي اركتكشرال ديستورشن داك تشينجز سكين ثيكنينج ريتراكشن والاديما والفاسكولاريتي طيب نعمل ايه لو لقينا ليجن مش ماشي مع الديسكريبشن دي حد يقدر يقول لي ان الليجن اللي احنا شايفينه ده قادرين نقول عليه اتس ماس ما اعتقدش ان حد شايف ده ماس ولا اي حاجه تانية من الديسكريبتورز اللي في الفيرات يبقى ده لا هقدر اقول عليه ولا ماس ولا كالسيفيكيشن ولا اي حاجه من الاسوشيتد فيتشرز اللي انلستد في الاي سي ار فيرات تمام كده طيب في ريسيرشز كتيره جدا اتعملت عشان تستدي الليجنز اللي هي الديسكريبتشنز بتاعتها مش ماشيه مع الاي سي ار فيرات وفي ريسيرشز دي They referred to these lesions as non-mass lesions. إيه هي non-mass lesions دي؟ هي بالنسبة لنا area discrete و identifiable وليها altered echogenicity compared to the surrounding breast tissue وليها indistinct shape uh, on different projections which does not conform to the criteria of a mass. أكمل أكمل إزاي؟ <تصفيق> أنا ظاهرة عندي بس هي لازم تظهر عندكم. ورا مش ظاهرة.
والدكتور لاميا حد عايز يسال الدكتوره لاميا اي اسئله نستغل الوقت لغايه ما الشاشه تشتغل أنا ممكن أقول بس الفكرة إن في حاجات هتبقى فيها صور أنا كده كمان عندي أنا فصلت اه ولا ما هي عمالين بيحاولوا يفصلوها تقريبا عشان يعملوا كورليشن او حاجه مش عارفه اوكي okay. الشباب اللي معانا انتوا بتشتغلوا ماموجرافي والترا ساوند بريست يس جزء من uh, مثلا لسته فيها حاجات تانية ولا جست uh, بيبقى عندكم في يعني ماموجرافي وبريست الترا ساوند شيفتس يعني ما حدش بيرد لي <تصفيق> طيب <تصفيق> طيب حاسين ان انتم محتاجين تريننج اكتر انترفنشنال ولا الترا ساوند ولا ولا ام ار اي ام ار اي اوكي انترفنشن تمام اوكي المره الجايه نعمل لكم انترفنشن بقى يعني وام ار اي في على فكره كذا مؤتمر جاي للبريست ايمجينج في في شهر فبراير بتاع الايجيبشن سوسايتي اوف وومنز هيلث وده هيبقى فيه ام ار اي وانترفنشن وكل حاجه يعني وهيبقى فيه برضو ام ار اي في شهر 12 يعني 1 اور 2 دي كورس لسه هنشوف ففي كذا حاجه ممكن بقى نفولو انا هبقى احط لكم الانستغرام بيج بتاع كل الايفنتس اللي بتنزل للبريست ايمجينج يو كان فولو ات يعني انا عندي كومنت بس على محاضره الدكتوره لاميا بعد اذن حضراتكم كان البايرادز الجديد اللي لسه هينزل كانوا زودوا ان يبقى هيزودوا في الفايندنجز حاجة اسمها الايكوجينيك رايند اللي هي اللي احنا بنسميها ايكوجينيك هيلو فان هي وي هاف تو الميجرمنتس بتاعتنا تبقى انكلودنج الايكوجينيك رايند او ايكوجينيك هيلو ده فذيس از ان ذا نيو بايرات الحمد لله المحاضرة رجعت طيب <تصفيق> طيب احنا كنا بنتكلم على النون ماس بريست ليجنز في الالترا ساوند كام حد فيكم وهو بيشتغل كان بيلاقي ليجنز هو مش قادر يوصفها بالبايرادز مش قادر يقول ان انا شايف ماس او بنكتبها موست بروبلي في الرابورتس از ان اريا اوف التر ايكوجينيستي مثلا اكستندنج من الساعه كذا للساعه كذا مش ده بيحصل كتير معانا كلنا تمام هو ده المقصود بالناس نون ماس ليجن ليجن انا مش قادره اقول انها دي شكل الماس 
ومش قادرة أحط لها أي كرايتيريا من البيراد لاكسيكون هو لحد دلوقتي الترم ده it's not added في ال ultrasound by red lexicon بتاع 2013 على الرغم من كده radiologists occasionally encounter breast lesions that may not meet the exact by red ultrasound criteria والليجنز دي مش قليلة لأنها بتrepresent من 1 to 5.3% of the breast lesions بما ان ما فيش unified terminology describing the ultrasound finding ده النون ماس فايندنج كل حد بيكتبها بطريقه مختلفه في الريبورت بتاعه اوكي okay? يا اما في ناس بتكتب اتس ا فيج اريا اوف اولترد ايكو تكشر او نون ماس ايمج فورمينج ليجن او نون ماس لايك ليجن او نون ماس ليجن سوري المالتيبلستي اوف ذا نيمز اللي حاصله دي بتخلي عندنا variation in recognition and interpretation يعني أنا أما هيروح الرابر ده لأي clinician هو ما فيش شكل معين مرتبط بالترمينولوجي ده لأن كل واحد بيوصفها زي ما هو شايفها لأنه ما عندوش exact terminology يستخدمه للليجن ده تمام؟ طيب ال definition بتاعت النون ماس ليجنز بما أن النون ماس ليجنز مش في البيراز لاكسيكن ريسيرشز كتيرة جدا اتعملت على النون ماس ليجنز كل واحد وصف الديفينيشن بتاع النون ماس ليجن دي اكوردنج تو وات هي ثينكس از ابروبريت انف تو ديسكرايب ات هاويفر كل واحد وصفها ان ا ديفرنت ترمينولوجي وبالتالي Although there are various terms with varying descriptors but all studies define a non mass finding as A sonographic findings that does not conform to a mass shape, thus having non-convex borders. باختلاف كل الترمينولوجي اللي استخدم في الريسورسز دي هي دي البوينت اللي كل الريسورسز اتفقت عليها. إن هي sonographic finding بس أنا مش قادرة أقول عليها إن هي it's a mass. تمام؟ الclassifications. أول classification اتعمل اتعمل سنة 2004 عن طريق الـ Japanese Association of Breast and Thyroid Sonology دول حبوا يقسموا الـ Non-Mass Lesions فعملوا لها classification إن هي يا إما Ductal Dilatation أو إنها Multi-Vesicular Pattern أو Low Echo Area in the Mammary Gland either بقى Spotted or Mottled Low Echo Areas أو Geographic Low Echo Areas أو low echo areas with indistinct margin وآخر حاجة architecture distortion ال classification ده ما كانش وافي في شرح ال non mass lesions اتعمل له modification سنة 2014 كم اتاع العمل modification لل classification ده وقسمهم على حسب ال non mass findings patterns أو ال distribution قسم ال patterns إن هي ممكن تبقى modeled أو geographic أو indistinct وقسم ال distribution ان انا ممكن ال lesions دي تبقى عندي focal distribution او regional distribution ومن ساعتها كذا research اتعمل وعملوا different classifications برضو لل non mass lesions كلهم مش متفقين على حاجة معينة سنة 2020 شو يتعل جمع كل ال classifications اللي اتعملت قبل كده بحيث ان هو يحاول يعمل unification لل classification of non-mass lesion to facilitate the interpretation بتاعتها قسمها على حسب ال ecogenicity وال distribution وال associated features اللي معاها اول حاجة على حسب ال ecogenicity يا اما predominantly hypoechoic اللي هو فيها more than 50% of the lesion hypoechoic أو predominantly hyperechoic more than 50% hyper أو إنها mixed hyper and hypoechoic أو predominantly anechoic تاني تقسيمة كانت على حسب ال distribution ليه بتعمل نقطة كده أول حاجة ال focal lesions اللي هي small confined lesions تاني حاجة linear segmental which is a longitudinal lesion 
along ductal distribution واخر حاجه اللي هي regional اللي هي بتبقى large geographic area طيب الاسوشيتد فيتشرز مع النون ماس ليجنز لقوها انها يا اما calcifications يا اما tubular or ductal architecture يا اما posterior shadowing او architectural distortion الكالسيفيكيشنز بنشوفها شايفين الايكوجينيك فوسايل الاروس بيشاور عليها هي ده منظر الكالسيفيكيشن في الليجنز اما بنشوفه في الالترا ساوند الكالسيفيكيشنز لما بنلاقيها في ليجن ده معناه ان this ليجن is three times more likely to be a malignant ليجن احنا ممكن نشوف الكالسيفيكيشن دي في benign ليجنز زي الفايبرو ادينوما والراديال سكار والاتيبيكال دكتور هايبربلازيا اند تيوبلر ادينوما او في malignant ليجنز زي الانفيزيف دكتور كارسينوما والدكتور كارسينوما ان سايتو اند لوبلر كارسينوما ان سايتو التيوبلر اند اور دكتال تشينجز زي ما احنا شايفينها هنا الارو مشاور عليها في الصوره دي ات كان بي كوز باي بيناين ليجنز هاويفر دكتال تشينجز مي ريبريزنت ذا دكتال سبريد اوف كانسر سيلز دي ممكن نلاقيها في بيناين ليجنز زي الانترا دكتال بابيلوما والاتيبيكال دكتال هايبربلازيا والاتيبيكال لوبيلر هايبربلازيا والفايبروسيستيك تشينجز والدكتال ابتيزيا او في مالجنت زي الانفيزيف دكتال كارسينوما والدكتال كارسينوما ان سايتو البوستيري اكوستيك شادوينج زي ما دكتوره لاميا شرحت لنا البوستيري تشينجز يا اما فيها شادوينج يا اما فيها انهانسمنت هنا الاسوشيتد مع النون ماش ليجنز اللي احنا بنتكلم فيها الشادوينج طيب الشادوينج ده بيبقى انديكيتنج باثولوجيكال تشينجز ان سايتنج ديزمو بلاستيك رياكشن ذات كان اتينويت الالترا ساوند بي وده ممكن نشوفه في بيناين ليجنز زي البوست اوبريتيف سكار والكومبلكس كليروزنج ليجن والفايبرس اور دانس بريست تيشو او في مالجنت ليجنز زي الانفيزيف كارسينوما اخر حاجه في الاسوشيتد تشينجز هي الاركيتكتشرال ديستوشن انا هنا مش عارفه اشاور بس هي الاروز على الصور موريه كل حاجه دي بتحصل due to pathological changes distorting the duct within the adjacent fibroglandular tissue or straightening nearby Cooper's ligaments. برضو بنشوفها في benign lesions بس it's much much more frequent in the malignant lesions. Okay? The benign lesions اللي ممكن يحصل فيها the architecture distortion بتبقى the fibrosis and the sclerosing adenosis and the fat necrosis and the radial scar and complex sclerosing lesions. المالجنت ليجنز بتبقى الانفيزيف كارسينوما والدكتال كارسينوما ان سايتو طبعا لو استخدمنا الالاستيستي والفاسكولاريتي ده هي فيرذر انهانس ان احنا تو كاركترايز النون ماس ليجنز في البريست الترا ساوند اكتر من ان احنا نستخدم المورفولوجيكال فيتشرز الون لان عندنا في المالجنت ليجنز بتبقى فيها يوزولي هاير فاسكولاريتي ذان البناين ليجنز بيبقى يوزولي فيها مور ذان تو فاسلز والريل تايم الاستوغرافي بيأسست في الدايجنوزز لان هو لي هاي سبيسيفستي فور ديستينجوشينج بناين من المالجنت نون ماس ليجنز طيب في الكوريليشن مع الهيستو باثولوجيكال فايندينجز المالجنت ريت باي اركتكتشر اوف نون ماس فايندينجز از نوت نون ما اقدرش اقول ان انا لو لقيت ان الليجن دي اتس هايبر ايكوك ليجن فده معناها انها مالجنت أو لو هايبو كوك إتس مالجنت، إحنا ما عندناش أي كوريليشن بالأكوتكتشر، حتى في البايرادز أطلس ذا أكوتكتشر أوف ماس إز نوت بريدكتيف أوف هيستو باثولوجيكال فايندينج، أند نو ستاديز هاف بين بيرفورم تو استابلش ذا بروجنوستيك فاليو أوف أكوتكتشر أوف نون ماس فايندينجز إن ديستينجشينج بيتوين بيناين أند مالجنت. هاويفر ذا ألترا ساوند فيتشر أوف نون ماس فايندينج كونسيستنتلي أسوشيتد وذ مالجنسي is the presence of associated calcifications. يعني أنا دايما لما ألاقي نم ماس ليجن معها calcification هنا لازم أبقى قلقانة. بارك إتقال قال إن الـ uh, segmental distribution much more common في المالجنت ليجنز representing 45.5% compared to 17% في البناين ليجنز. وكام إتقال قال إن الـ regional distribution 
برضو it's more common in malignant lesion representing 30% compared to 2.6 في ال benign lesions non-mass findings malignancy rate reported in literature is ranging from 10 to 54% of cases benign lesions that may manifest as non-mass findings are broad بس كم إتال طلع إن أكتر حاجة في البناين ليجنز بتبرزنت نون ماس فايندينج إن 70% of cases بيبقى الفايبروسيستيك تشينجز نون ماس فايندينجز كان مانيفست إن بوث إنفيزيف أن نون إنفيزيف بريست كانسر أز ويل أز إن نون برايمري بريست مالينسيز The most common breast cancers identified as non mass findings on ultrasound images were ductal carcinoma in situ and invasive lobular carcinoma. A ductal carcinoma can represent 11 to 19 percent, while invasive lobular carcinoma can represent 13 percent. And then a lot of entities and then a monkey to Dina Manzer in non mass findings. لو اتكلمنا عن البناين انتتز هنلاقي حاجات كتيره جدا زي نورمال بريست تيشو ابسس ايبوكرايم ميتابليزيا اتيبيكال دكتور هايبربليزيا كرونيك جرانيولوماتس انفلاميشن دايباتيك ماستابثي دكتيكتيزيا فات نيكروزز فايبرو ادينوما فايبروسيستيك تشينجز فايبروزز بابيليماتوزز بلازما سيل ماستايتس راديال سكار اند سكليروزنج ادينوزز اكشلي موست اوف ذا بريست باثولوجيز كان بريزنت وذ نون ماس ليجنز اند اولسو ان ذا مالجننت انتتز وي هاف Ductal carcinoma in situ, invasive ductal, lobular carcinoma in situ, invasive lobular, invasive mixed, invasive papillary, metaplastic, metastasis, mucinous carcinoma, or acute lymphatic leukemia. فزي ما انتو شايفين ان دي النم ماس ليجن بتريبرزنت جزء كبير جدا من الباثولوجيز اللي احنا بنقابله سواء بناين او مالجنت. فعشان كده احنا لازم نبقى عارفين ازاي نوصفها وازاي نكتبها ولازم الكلينيشنز يبقوا اورينتد بالترمينولوجي عشان يفهموا اللي احنا بنقوله. طيب دي اكزامبلز للنون ماس ليجنز في الالترا ساوند هنا عندنا لينير نون ماس ليجن بريدومنتلي هايبوكوك الباثولوجي ريفيل دكتور كارسينوما ان سايتو ودي لو مشينا على الكلاسيفيكيشن اللي احنا قلناه فاحنا هنتكلم عليها انها فوكل لانها سمول وكونفاين اوف ميكست ايكوجينيستي تمام والباثولوجي قال انها انفيزيف دكتال كارسينوم هنا عندنا لينير بريدومنتلي هايبو اوكوك نون ماس ليجن والباثولوجي طلع ادينوما لايك بروليفيريشن شايفين هنا انا برضو مش عارفه اشاور بس هو في دي ريجنال نون ماس ليجن بريدومنتلي هايبو اوكوك وفي فيها ايكوجينيك فوساي الايكوجينيك فوساي دي بتريبرزنت كالسيفيكيشن فبالنسبه لنا دي ذس از ا هايلي سسبيشس ليجن اند ات ريفيل تو بي دكتور كارسينوما ان سايتو هنا عندنا فوكال نون ماس ليجن اوف ميكست ايكوجينيستي والباثولوجي طلع فوكال اديبوستيشو دي فوكال نون ماس ليجن اوف ميكست ايكوجينيستي وطلعت دكتال كارسينوما ان سايتو طيب ان كورليشن وذ ماموجرافيك فايندينجز هل النون ماس ليجنز دي بيبقى ليها كورليشن مع الماموجرافي بلاقي حاجه في الماموجرافي اه كتير جدا من الحالات بيبقى ليها كورليشن من الماموجرافي بس مش كلها Accurate identification of ultrasound correlate for mammographic abnormality is important component in diagnostic evaluation. Mammographic lesions, the most commonly appearing as non-mass finding for ultrasound, can be classification, or the focal will developing asymmetry, or the architectural distortion. Shetty and Watson reported that 35% of focal asymmetry cases depicted non-mass finding on ultrasound, while Jacital found that 53% of developing asymmetries had non-mass finding on ultrasound. يبقى the developing أو the focal asymmetry من الحاجات الكومن جدا إنها تبرزنت عندنا بنون-mass lesions. Park et al. reported that malignant non-mass finding in ultrasound are more common associated with mammographic abnormality than are benign non-mass finding. 
as 84% of malignant non-mass findings had corresponding mammographic abnormalities compared with 40% in benign non-mass findings. The craniocodal mammographic image can see a focal asymmetry with corresponding ultrasound image metallah focal non-mass lesion of mixed ecogenicity the pathology tala lupus mastitis. The another uh, tomographic images showing architectural distortion at six o'clock with corresponding ultrasound images showed linear predominantly hypocoke non-mass lesion and the pathology revealed atypical ductal hyperplasia. This is another mammographic lesion showing distortion on mammography and the corresponding ultrasound images showed focal non-mass lesion of mixed ecogenicity and the pathology was invasive carcinoma with ductal and lobular features and ductal carcinoma in situ. This is another mammographic image showing focal asym uh, sorry, a regional asymmetry with overlying pleomorphic calcifications. The AI images revealed 95% probability of malignancy. The ultrasound images revealed linear and segmental non-mass lesions of mixed ecogenicity. And the contrast study showed extensive non-mass enhancement involving most of the breast, mainly the upper with central parts, and the pathology revealed invasive ductal carcinoma. In correlation with MRI, non-mass finding may be a sonographic correlate for an MRI abnormality. Wang et al. reported that ultrasound correlates for ductal carcinoma in situ, which appear as non-mass enhancement at MRI, included vague area of decreased ecogenicity or altered ecotexture or non-mass finding. So Tom et al. found that 40% of non-mass finding and ultrasound have corresponding enhancing lesions at MRI. And of these findings, 97% were non-mass enhancement at MRI. Yani it's very common in an lesion amla non-mass enhancement for MRI to dini non-mass lesion on ultrasound. As you can see here, this is axial subtraction and sagittal post contrast MRI showing focal non-mass enhancement. The ultrasound corresponding images showed a focal uh, non-mass lesion of mixed ecogenicity and the pathology revealed invasive lobular carcinoma. This is axial post-contrast MRI showing upper inner non-mass enhancement with corresponding, sorry, with, with corresponding Segmental non-mass lesion of mixed ecogenicity with foci of calcification seen within the pathology revealed ductal carcinoma in situ. In this lesion, and sorry, in these images, there is an axial post-contrast MRI showing linear and clustered links uh, enhancement pattern. The corresponding ultrasound showed linear non-mass lesion of mixed ecogenicity with calcification seen within, and the pathology was high-grade ductal carcinoma in situ. So our take home message today is non-mass findings are discrete identifiable areas of altered ecotexture compared with that of the surrounding breast tissue having an indistinct shape on two different projections that does not conform to the criteria of a mass. They should be classified according to their ecogenicity, distribution, and associated features. Their malignancy rate reported in the literature as ranging from 10% to 54% of cases. Non-mass finding may be imaging correlates for mammographic and MR finding, which could be calcification, focal all developing asymmetry, and architectural distortion of mammography and non-mass enhancement at MRI.
They are significant as they may indicate malignancy, especially if associated with calcification depicted on ultrasound. It can be subtle on ultrasound images. However, suspicion should be raised, especially if they are detected on ultrasound images in the expected location of a suspicious, uh, suspicious mammographic or MR finding. However, the current published literature of numb mass enhancement provides varied definitions and classification system. Therefore, further studies are needed to validate these categories with histopathological correlation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Heba, for this very illustrative uh, lecture. And I think we have one minute for any questions from the floor. Anybody wants to ask uh, Dr. Heba? Uh, Dr. Ma? Heba, I could say, I want to ask you, non-mass enhancement for metastasis. او النان ماس يعني في الالتراسونيك فايندنج في الميتاستس انا الحقيقه يعني احنا شفنا ميتاستس كتير بس كلهم كانوا ماسز انا ما ف... ما عداش عليا خالص نان ماس آه يعني هل هل دي مذكوره و... وممكن تبقى مع ايه من ال... من ال... هي مكتوبه انها اه ممكن تحصل مع الميتاستاتيك ليجنز مش متحدد حضرتك مع ايه بالظبط بس مكتوب في اللاتشر ان من الحاجات اللي لقوا فيها الالترا ساوند فايندنج نان ماس ليجنز هي الميتاستس اللي متحدده اكتر انها اللوكيميا انما اذروايز آه. مكتوب آه. انها مور كان بي سين ان ميتاستاتيك ليجنز انا ما شفتهاش Thank you, Heba, very much for this. I like very much the correlation you did of ultrasound with mammography and MRI. Thank you very much. And now we call for the third presenter, and it is Dr. Iman Adel. She She's the breast imaging and interventional consultant in Polis Academy and the radiology workflow manager, presidential initiative on women's health. Dr. Iman will present ultrasound of axillary lymph nodes. Thank you, Dr. Zareya. Okay, the ultrasound of axillary lymph nodes. The lymphatic system and drainage plays, plays a significant role in the pathology and treatment of breast cancer, uh, which is globally the most frequently diagnosed malignancy leading to the first cause of death in women. Malignant cells traveling within the lymphatic system are a common mechanism of tumor metastasis. And the examination of lymphatic tissue is essential for cancer prognosis and staging. Advances in lymph node imaging, diagnosis, and management have improved survival and reduced morbidity from breast cancer uh, treatment. A lymph node is an important part of our immune system. The primary function of lymph nodes is to filter the lymphatic fluid to isolate and kill invading microorganisms. To do this, the lymph nodes contain lymphocytes that activate the immune defense in different ways. We have the B lymphocytes that produce antibodies and the T lymphocytes that destroy the cancer cells. The structure of a lymph node has um, a convex uh, outer surface uh, that drains the afferent uh, vessels and a concave inner surface with the hilum draining into the efferent uh, lymphatic system. The lymphatic drainage of the breast originates from the breast lobules and flows into a subareolar plexus, then drains through three main routes. The axillary or lateral pathway that represents 75% of the lymphatic drainage. The lymph channels extend along the inferior edge of the pectoralis major to reach the pectoral group of the axillary nodes. The lymphatics further drain to the central and apical axillary nodes and finally to the deep cervical and subclavian nodes. We have also the internal mammary pathway. The lymphatics originate from both the lateral and medial halves of the breast and pass through the pectoralis major to drain to the parasternal nodes. The retromammary pathway, the lymphatics drainage, drainage comes from the posterior portion of the breast and may reach the sheath of the rectus abdominis and the subperitoneal and subhepatic plexus. Uh, a brief about the anatomy. 
The auxiliary nodes are usually around 20 to 30 nodes arranged in five main groups. Each group may have around six uh, lymph nodes. We have the anterior uh, or the pectoral group deep to the pectoralis major and drains the lateral part of the breast mainly. We have the lateral or the humeral group uh, along the axillary vein that drains mainly the upper limb. We have the posterior or the subscapular group that drains the posterior neck and the axillary tail of the breast. Then we have the central group. This is in the axillary pad of fat and drains above that drains all the above groups, the previous three groups, and the upper part of the breast. And we have the apical nodes, or the infraclavicular, at the apex of the axilla and drain the central group. So we have the anterior, and we have the lateral and the posterior. These are the three main groups. They represent level one when we come to the staging, and the three will drain to the central group, and the central will drain to the apical and then to the subclavian. Eventually, all groups will drain to the thoracic duct. The regional lymph nodes for the breast also include the supraclavicular and the internal mammary nodal chains. The internal mammary nodes, also known as the parasternal nodes, these nodes travel along the internal thoracic artery and vein within the intercostal spaces, and variations in the blood supply to the breast accompany perforating lymphatics explain why in all quadrants of the breast, cancer has the potential to metastasize varaparastinal lymphatics, especially in the deep medial aspect of the breast. The supraclavicular nodes are a paired group of lymph nodes located on each side superior to the clavicle. It is the final common pathway of lymphatic system as it joins the central venous system. And the left supraclavicular lymph node is also known as the Verkaus node. The interpectoral node, uh, also known as Rotter's node, usually consists of one to four nodes between the pectoralis major and minor muscles and receive the drainage directly from the breast, draining into the apical, axillary, and the pectoral group. This is the rotor's node. It's actually one of the difficult nodes to find on ultrasound. Maybe it's easier uh, to get on the MRI, the sagittal. Um, to find it on the ultrasound, we, sometimes we do a technique with the patient sitting and we try to uh, check it from the lateral side, not the routine uh, examination of the axilla. Okay, we also, we also have the intramammary nodes. It's the node within the breast and affects the staging and have a prognostic value. So it may be uh, uh, N1, but it will be stage two. For the, cl the clinical classification and the staging, we have level one, the three uh, first groups, the anterior, the posterior, and the lateral. And then we have the central, that's level two, and we have the apical, uh, that's level three. Rotor's node will be uh, at level two, and the uh, supraclavicular will be at level three. This is the image showing the three levels. So the blue are level one, uh, the lower axillary, the three groups, and the, uh, the red ones are the level two, the central, and the purple ones are the epical. These are level three with the supraclav, the yellow ones, and then the green ones are the parasternal. Okay. Imaging, uh, the axillary ultrasound should be performed using a high-frequency probe. A lower-frequency setting may be needed for larger patients or for patients with a large axillary pad of fat. However, the spatial resolution will be compromised. The patient should lie in a supine oblique position with her hand above her head and her arm abducted and externally rotated. All findings should be documented and the largest uh, lesion dimensions uh, should also be uh, recorded. Okay, this is the scan of the axilla. This is our medial and lateral uh, positions. Um, the triangle demonstrates uh, the apical uh, configuration. Uh, the axillary region is like a 3D area. 
So we have to uh, imagine that some of the nodes are uh, on the chest, others are on the arm, and the rest are uh, in the apex. When color Doppler ultrasound is used, it is important to use low wall filter setting and allow velocity setting, the higher, higher pulse repetition frequency, to detect abnormal blood flow. The color gain should be increased high enough to detect subtle flow without causing a noise artifact. And sometimes we can use the power Doppler. The normal axillary nodes, the first line of imaging for the, uh, the ultrasound is the first line of imaging for the axilla. The high frequency uh, uh, probe uh, evaluates well level one nodes uh, located in the lower part of the axilla and posterolateral to lateral edge of the pectoralis major muscle. Evaluation will include size of the node, morphological features, shape, contour, uniformity, integrity of the hilum, perinodal fat plane, and high vascularity on Doppler. Hilar vascularity, sorry. A normal axillary lymph node uh, is oval in shape with smooth, well delineated contours and wide central fatty hilum and uniform peripheral cortex. The normal node usually measures around 10 millimeters and the cortex is less than 3 millimeters with central hilar vascularity seen on color Doppler ultrasound. This is the normal node on mammography and on ultrasound. We can only th see the thin uh, homogeneous uh, cortex and the preserved uh, fatty hilum. The abnormal axillary nodes, usually the disease will begin from the periphery of the node. So the abnormal node will show the morphological features uh, as follows. Uh, increase in size, loss of the oval shape, it will become round or irregular with convex indentation sometimes of the head fatty hilum, that's called the red bite sign, or focal bulges. Uh, cortical thickening will be more than three millimeter with areas of focal thickening more than six millimeter, that will be a highly suspicious, suspicious feature. Uh, the eccentric, flattened, uh, concentric hilar compression or the lost fatty hilum. Um, more suspicious features will be the presence of abnormal color Doppler flow or the non hilar cortical blood flow. Uh, microcalcifications may be seen, similar to the primary tumor loss of contours and features of perinodal fat infiltration. Uh, lymph node with indistinct or speculated margin is also a strong uh, sign uh, of extranodal extension. And sometimes there is complete or partial replacement of the lymph node with an ill-defined or irregular mass. This is a diagram to show the findings uh, on ultrasound. Um, the first one is the, the, the focal uh, change in the cortex, and then the increased cortical thickening, eccentric uh, cortical thickening, pushing the hilum, extracapsular uh, extension, uh, rounded or totally lost uh, hilum, rounded contour with totally lost hilum, uh, and then complete effacement uh, of the hilum. The differential diagnosis may sometimes include infection, Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, inflammatory mastitis, metastatic nodes from distant metastasis, uh, lymphoid hyperplasia, and other like uh, local infection, pet scratches, injury, uh, fungal, and some uh, less common stuff. The features of the findings that we uh, already said. This is the diffuse cortical thickening as a diagram and on ultrasound. The cortical thickening is more than three millimeters. This is uh, non-specific. Um, it is uh, usually the diffuse cortical thickening and sometimes we have the borderline uh, number. It's exactly three millimeters. So we cannot actually say if it's um, pathological or not. We would prefer to call it indeterminate. This is the eccentric cortical thickening at the apex. This is the focal cortical thickening at any part of the node. This is more suspicious. This is partial uh, effacement and flattening of the hilum. This is a rounded uh, node with uh, almost lost hilum. Sometimes it's totally replaced, no hilum. This is the subcapsular extension 
with invasion uh, uh, of uh, um, the mass from the uh, invasion of the capsule by the mass. It's highly suspicious. These are the microcalcifications in the lymph node resembling the primary tumor. This is the non hyalur blood flow that comes from the marginal, uh, the margin of the lymph node. It's very suspicious. And sometimes we have extra capsular extension uh, with the non hyalur uh, blood flow. These are examples. Altered contour, uh, eccentric hilum, focal cortical thickening, uh, totally lost hilum. This is also a diffuse cortical thickening. This is a long uh, diameter lymph node, uh, diffuse and eccentric focal cortical thickening. This is a rounded lymph node, uh, almost a very small uh, remaining hilum. This is a classification that shows how can we judge the findings. So if the hilum is still present, it's type one. If the, the major, the, there is diffuse cortical thickening, it's type two. Uh, if it's more than three millimeter, it's type three. Uh, if we have a focal uh, lo lobulated contour, this is type four. Uh, then we have uh, eccentric hilum, this is type five. Then totally uh, uh, effaced hilum, this is type six. These are also examples of what we just said. Diffuse and focal cortical thickening, eccentric hilum, lobulated margin. This is a metastatic invasive duct carcinoma showing dense enlarged axillary lymph node level one with hilar obliteration on mammography and focal eccentric cortical thickening on ultrasound. This is invasive duct carcinoma showing level one enlarged axillary lymph node with fine pleomorphic microcalcification. These are multiple dense enlarged axillary lymph nodes with indistinct margin and fat infiltration from the extracapsular extension seen on mammogram. On the ultrasound, we see three small but rounded hypoechoic metastatic axillary nodes. The other image uh, shows irregular shape with indistinct margin and perinodal extension. Whenever the margin uh, becomes hazy, this is the extracapsular extension. These are ultrasound imaging demonstrating the metastatic node with invasive duct carcinoma showing cortical thickening, complete abscess of uh, fatty hilum, and the color image showing increased non hyalur uh, cortical blood flow and diffuse hyperemia. Okay, this is auxiliary node evaluation following the neoadjuvant chemotherapy. There is a clip in the pathological node and then another image after completion of the uh, treatment. Uh, now we come to the points that we will report uh, for the lymph node. We will report the shape, the size of the largest node or nodes if we have more than one large. Uh, we will comment on the cortex, the thickness, diffuse symmetrical uh, cortical thickening or focal uh, asymmetrical cortical thickening or lobulated outline. We will comment on the hilum, symmetrical, asymmetrical, indented, compressed, di di displaced, effaced or lost. We will comment if they are discrete or amalgamated. We will comment on extra capsular infiltration if we see it. We will comment on the levels. And we will determine if they are pathological or indeterminate according to the level. So we see pathological uh, level one and two, and we may see indeterminate level three. So we have to specify. We will comment on the Doppler. Uh, we will comment on the supraclavicular lymph node if present or not, and the internal uh, mammary lymph nodes if present or not. Okay, and pathological or uh, indeterminate. Uh, we try to grade the, the lymph nodes according to the findings we see on the ultrasound. So the normal node is oval, smooth, uniform, low, cortical thickening below three millimeter, that's the fine. The lower suspicion, that will be the indeterminate. The cortical thickening usually diffuse 
plus or minus three millimeter. This is the, the cut off. So if it's exactly three, we will be wondering, is it indeterminate, is it pathological? I will, be start, I will start looking for other uh, features. Is there uh, also a focal thickening? Is there any part of the cortex that is more than three millimeter? Is there change in Doppler? Is there uh, any change in the hilum? And then the suspicious uh, nodes that have the, the more than one uh, of the features that we already mentioned. Okay, we have this algorithm when we uh, reach our decision about the auxiliary nodes and their distribution. So we have either negative nodes, uh, they will go for the surgery to uh, the sentinel node biopsy. And we have the positive node, they will go to the uh, auxiliary uh, clearance. And then we have the indeterminate nodes. We, at that point, we have to do the core biopsy or the fine needle uh, biopsy before uh, the surgery to decide. If they are negative, they will go with the sentinel uh, biopsy during surgery. And if they are positive, they will go with the auxiliary clearance. This is the ultrasound guided core needle biopsy technique. We use the infralateral or supramedial approach, and then uh, we flatten the axilla as much as we can with the wedge, and we open uh, the, the needle, uh, local anesthesia, small incision, and we try to use the color to avoid the vessel if we can. Okay, just a brief about the staging. If the nodes are clear, this is uh, on the TNM classification, it's NO. If it's N1, uh, we have mobile uh, level one nodes or level one and two. Uh, if we are in uh, fixed or matted level one and two, or we have uh, uh, internal mammary node, this is uh, N2. And uh, N3, we have uh, level three, regardless of the status of level one and two. And we have uh, 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 ipsilateral internal uh, mammary with the axillary, and we have uh, supraclavicular. All these are level three. Okay, to finalize, we have the axillary node evaluation in breast cancer. Uh, the axillary node metastasis is the most important predictor of overall recurrence and survival in patients with breast cancer, and accurate assessment of axillary lymph node involvement is an essential component in staging breast cancer. Axillary management in patients with breast cancer has become much less invasive with the introduction of sentinel node biopsy. Assessment of nodal disease burden to guide multidisciplinary treatment decision making is now considered to be a critical role of axillary imaging and can be achieved with axillary ultrasound and ultrasound guided biopsy. As methods of axillary nodal evaluation evolve, the breast radiologists and the surgeons must work closely to maximize the potential role of imaging and to provide the most optimized treatment for patients. Controversy regarding the need for routine preoperative axillary ultrasound, the traditional role of preoperative identification of axillary metastasis using ultrasound and biopsy is to allow the surgeon to avoid an unnecessary sentinel node biopsy and proceed directly to the axillary lymph node dissection with its near perfect specificity and positive predictive value. In addition, preoperative evaluation could potentially help to identify deep, non-palpable metastatic axillary nodes. Okay. Evaluation of the diagnostic accuracy of preoperative ultrasound for axillary lymph nodes in breast cancer patients, the likelihood of survival rises with early breast cancer diagnosis, which lowers the death rates for the treatment of breast cancer axillary nodes uh, must be correctly staged and managed. Axillary ultrasound has revealed to be useful in detection of malignant lymph nodes with a sensitivity of 93% and a specificity of 77% in, in, in detecting truly malignant lymph nodes. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, entire lecture. Uh, <clears throat> now we are uh, 
I have the honor to present Dr. Nurhan Hussain, a breast imaging interventional consultant, radiology ex executive director, presidential in 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 initiative on women's health, treasurer, uh, Egyptian Society of Women's Health, RSNA, American Society of Breast Imaging, abstract review committee member. Thank and her, um, uh, her presentation is about breast cancer staging by ultrasound. Thank you, Dr. Maha. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to discuss uh, staging of breast cancer by ultrasound. So I think we should all agree that um, early detection is very important for survival and for prognosis. And we all also agree that... And we all also agree that imaging is pivotal for staging and for the treatment plan of every breast cancer patient. Okay, Tamim. Okay, so as I was just saying, that imaging is uh, pivotal and has a vital role in staging and in the treatment plan. So these are some of the points of discussion that we are going to go through today. So our objectives of this lecture is to understand the role of ultrasound in staging breast cancer, to appreciate its role in evaluation of the regional lymph nodes, and to appreciate its role also in guided interventional procedures important for staging. So the importance of staging, first of all, regarding prognosis is axillary node metastasis and the site and the extent of the primary tumor, and also regarding the treatment plan that may involve uh, surgery, chemo, or radiotherapy. Regarding staging of breast cancer, we should comment on the tumor size, the presence of multifocality and centricity, involvement of the skin, the pectoral fascia and muscle, as well as the lymph nodes. Now, when a patient is diagnosed with breast cancer, first she undergoes a clinical TNM staging. And this depends on the clinical, physical examination, and imaging. So before the TNM, we would uh, put the letter C for clinical. After she has taken treatment and undergone surgery, then we will have a pathological staging. So before the TNM, we should write P, P-T-N-M. If the patient is going to take neoadjuvant chemotherapy before surgery, we would add the letter Y. Y stands for neoadjuvant therapy. Now this is the staging system, the T for the TNM, that is regarding the primary tumor. The TX means that it cannot be assessed, T0, no evidence of primary tumor, and TIS means DCIS. T1 is when the tumor is less than two centimeters in its greatest dimension, T2, is when it's two to five, and T3 is when it's more than five centimeters. T4 means the tumor of any size with direct extensions to the chest wall. Now, if we look at the anatomic staging summary, we'll see that a T1, for example, will be involved in stage one and stage two as well. Stage 3A can also have T1, but it involves the N2, having a lymph node status that is uh, more advanced. And we're going to go through this in more details. So what is the eligibility of conservation? Why are we doing all this staging? It's so that we can, one of the main aims is to decide, is this patient eligible for conservation or not? So the indications of conservation according to the literature 
mainly are that the size is less than five centimeters. It can be stage TIX or uh, stage TIS or T1 or T2. The tumor uh, ratio to the breast size ratio and also when there is no contraindication to radiation. The contraindications can be relative or absolute. So the relative include prior radiation to the chest wall, genetic predisposition, extensive positive margins. Absolute contraindications may include multicentric disease, although this is debatable, because as I said, we look at the tumor size compared to the breast size, and the presence of diffuse uh, microcalcifications or DCIS, inflammatory cancer and patients in the first trimester of pregnancy, although there are many new advances in this now that there are some exceptions to the rule. Now, imaging includes all these modalities, but we are going to discuss ultrasound in more depth. So remember that the primary tumor, the T stage, the size of the T stage should be based on the invasive component only. So if you have an invasive cancer of two centimeters and non-invasive DCIS for about five centimeters, we stage according to the, 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 five, the smaller, can, the main invasive cancer. And the, T, and the sum of the sizes should not be used for staging. However, the, it's important for the plan of surgery. So it's not to be used for the TNM, but it is used for the plan of surgery, so as the multifocality and multicentricity. Imaging should scan the whole breast for additional malignancies and include speculations and echogenic halo in the measurements and scan the lymph nodes, of course. Now look at this very dense breast. We have an area of distortion, what Dr. Tabar would call the tenting. Okay, we have a tenting here. This is called the tenting sign, okay? And there was an area of distortion seen on ultrasound at this same area. Now, what are the criteria of classical malignant findings? As Dr. Lamia Adel said, some of them include a taller than wide uh, cancer, okay? But some cancers are actually wider than tall, and this is a cross-section of the uh, breast showing the ducts with the terminal ductal lobular units. So this is what makes a cancer taller than wide, that it goes out of the duct in this direction. Yet if it comes in the end of the duct like this, or it grows widely like this, it may be wider than tall. So we should not be um, uh, suppressed by thinking that if it is wider than tall, then it is not a cancer. We should look at all the criteria, including the margins, like Dr. Lamia has discussed. Now, we have some challenges when we come to stage or diagnose um, cancers. For example, this is a case that shows on mammography, as you can see, that um, there is a large area of distortion here involving the whole, this area. But on ultrasound, it is much smaller. Okay? So this is one of the uh, challenges we have, that sometimes, as the area is much larger on mammography, it is only a small cancer on ultrasound, and in these cases, we should ask for MRI. Distortions are also uh, challenging to measure. This case, we can measure it. It's focal distortion, yet, for example, this case, as Dr. Hiba was uh, discussing, non-mass abnormalities, sometimes you are not able to measure the entire area by ultrasound, and again, you will need contrast mammography or MRI. This is a case where um, yeah, we have a measurable area of non-mass uptake. Here we can see the whole margins of the area, and we can measure it. And uh, complex cystic solid and intraductal lesions are also sometimes difficult to measure, especially intraductal extent. Okay. Uh, also, multiple echogenic masses. Sometimes we have on ultrasound echogenic or, or isoechoic masses that you're not really sure do you see something or not. And in this case, we should correlate with mammography. If we look at mammography, we can clearly see that there are multiple lesions. Uh, echogenic masses compromise about 0.5% of all malignant uh, abnormalities. 
Okay, calcifications on ultrasound. Now there are a lot of software that can help us um, see calcifications better by ultrasound, but in the basic uh, ultrasound machine, sometimes it's difficult. We can see lots of hyperechoic flex within uh, this mass or this non-mass area, and if you correlate with mammography, clearly the calcifications can be seen. The augmented breast ultrasound is definitely better than mammography. Here we have um, uh, on the left side an asymmetry seen. Okay, here in the MLO. And on ultrasound, there is uh, there are like um, areas of hypoechoic texture with some vascularity along the implant margins, and this was an implant-associated lymphoma. Now, T4 disease. A T4 disease is a tumor of any size with direct extension to the chest wall and or the skin, and uh, it is divided into A, B, C, and D. Uh, when we say the chest wall, this does not mean the pectoral muscle, okay? This means beyond the pectoral muscle, okay? So we mean uh, the intercostals, the ribs, not the pectoral muscle. And uh, T4B means ulceration or satellite nodules or edema of the skin, which do not meet the criteria on inflammatory carcinoma because inflammatory carcinoma is T4D wadha giddam. So, for example, we have a deeply seated mass here by mammography. It's difficult to see if it does infiltrate the chest wall or not. And here on the ultrasound, we can see that there is, it is clearly, it is just barely touching the pectoral fascia. And here, this is an example of a mass, a retroaerial mass infiltrating the nipple. And here, another case showing infiltration of the skin. So we can see that it's clearly outlined by ultrasound. There are special circumstances like invasive lobular cancer, DCIS, inflammatory cancers, um, measuring ductal extension, and also synchronous cancers. Uh, ductal extension is difficult to assess by ultrasound, although usually what we say is that we find some nodularities or prominent ducts beyond the margins of the mass, and we always recommend uh, MRI or a contrast study uh, to be able to measure the extensions properly. And sometimes they do um, coincide with the calcifications on mammography. Now, synchronous cancers, meaning having multiple cancers, and they vary in the literature, and bilaterality is in about 1 to 12 percent. Multifocality means same quadrant, multicentric, different quadrants, or a five, more than a 5 centimeter distance. Okay, this 73-year-old woman presented with a left breast lump. We can see that there is some, on the left side, some skin thickening. There is a large asymmetry as well. And on the right side, there is also a speculated mass at the medial or the inner quadrant. Here we can see by ultrasound the mass on the right side as well as a large area of non-mass on the left side. This is a bilateral cancer, of course. And a much more subtle case that presented with cancer on the right side. And we found a small cancer as well on the left upper outer quadrant. And this brings me to, um, to remind you of something very important. There are many places that do a, a single, uh, a one-side mammogram. Betigil Sayyidah tool, and I have to say that I'm going to do it on the right side, but I'm going to do it on the right side. But the situation is like this. It was going to do it on one side, and we were going to do it on the other side, and it turned out to be bilateral cancer. So this is the ultrasound showing the right a cancer and the left cancer, okay? Both invasive ductal cancer. Okay, assessment of multifocality is uh, of utmost important as we have a case here with right upper outer quadrant uh, areas of distortion, nodularity, and skin retraction. Here now we have multiple uh, malignant masses seen within the same quadrant by ultrasound. And another case with multicentricity. Okay, the mammogram is quite dense, but we can see some asymmetry on the left side. And here we can see that there are uh, masses, hypoechoic masses, on both the upper outer and upper inner quadrants. 
Okay, another case with multicentricity, multiple uh, echogenic uh, and hypoechoic masses seen within the left breast. Now, inflammatory cancer, as we said, is a T4D. Uh, there is ethema, erythema, and edema involving a third or more of the skin of the breast, and it's rapidly occurring. It is usually a, a clinical diagnosis, and it is due to tumor emboli within the dermal lymphatics. So this is an example of an inflammatory cancer involving the whole left breast, and this is her ultrasound showing um, different areas of distortion, uh, linear lakes or cystic uh, linearities, and thickened skin and edema. We also should use our bonus tools involving elastography, color doppler, harmonic imaging, and extended view imaging. And this is an example of a ductal carcinoma, invasive ductal carcinoma by elastography. Whether you have um, grayscale or color scale or the strain ratio, and elastography can help you in small masses, especially to differentiate between benign and malignant. And this is a case that was diagnosed as a fibroadenoma and came for a second opinion. And we can see how the elastography confirmed that it is malignant with having a hard compressibility and uh, it was an invasive ductal cancer. Extended field of view panoramic imaging is uh, uh, it's very good because it helps us in large masses and helps us also if we have multifocality and we want to measure the distance in between the mass and the satellites. Color Doppler definitely can help us evaluate more um, and especially in the lymph nodes as well as Dr. Iman had mentioned, the non hyler vessels and the vascularity within the mass. However, we all know that there's a lot of overlap in Doppler between benign and malignant. Now moving on to the next part of the lecture, regional lymph nodes evaluation. Now when we say regional lymph nodes, as Dr. Iman mentioned, we mean the axillary, the supraclavicular, and the internal mammary lymph nodes. The presence of lymph node metastasis and the number and location determines the pathologic stage, and it is an important predictor of recurrence and survival. Our aim is to avoid overtreatment and understaging. So, um, this paper uh, by Choi et al. showed that the negative predictive value is about 80% by ultrasound and specificity up to 98%, sensitivity up to 76% in detection of metastasis. Survival data show that when there is no nodal involvement, the percentage of survival increases to almost 100%. Okay? Compared to when there are more than five lymph nodes, they, uh, the percentage of survival decreases. Now, uh, the anatomy, okay, as we know, it is level one, two, and three, and supraclavicular and internal mammary. So level one is lateral to the border of the pectoralis minor, minor, two is between medial and lateral borders, and three, which was previously called infraclavicular, and we have as well the supra and uh, the internal mammary. Okay, according to the staging system, now, um, this is the uh, lymph node staging system. So uh, N0 means no lymph nodes seen clinically. This is the clinical anatomical staging. N1 means that it is metastasis to movable level 1 and 2. N2 means that the lymph nodes in level 1 and 2 are fixed or matted, or including the internal mammary lymph nodes. Level 3 means it is to the ipsilateral level 3 lymph nodes, with or without levels one and two, or involving the internal mammary lymph nodes with level one and two. So the difference between N3 and N2 is that N2 can have internal mammary without level one and two, but N3, if it has internal mammary, it is with level one or and level two. Also, it involves the supraclavicular nodes. And this is the anatomical uh, staging summary. So if we say that we have, for example, a N0, N0 means it should be stage 0 or stage 1A, okay? Stage N3, if we're talking about N3, uh, this means a stage 3C, as we can see on the graph. So it's good that you have the table beside you. So when you come to report, if you want to do a, an advanced report and add your TNM staging to it, that would be quite appreciated. 
Okay, of course, we mentioned the clinical staging. This is the pathological staging, and the pathological staging is done after the, um, the surgery with the specimen of the cancer, yet we have to know it because this really, we have to really comment on the number of axillary lymph nodes because this differs in the staging, okay? So, according to pathological staging, N0 is no, re no lymph node metastasis, N1 means less than three axillary or micrometastasis to the internal mammary or a combination of both. N2 is four to nine lymph nodes. N3 is more than 10. Okay, so it's very important for us to write how many lymph nodes are affected by imaging. Although this is not in the clinical TNM stage, but the surgeon is very important for them and the oncologist to know the number of affected lymph nodes. Okay, this is a case where we have a mass seen on the MLO view as well as a uh, pathological intramammary lymph node. This is an intramammary lymph node. And this would be a T1, N1, M0. T1 because the mass is less than two centimeters. And N1 because it involves the intramammary lymph node. The intramammary lymph node is considered level one. Okay, so we consider it with level one. So this would be a stage 2A. Now, um, Nodal pathology, how does it happen? The breast metastasis enter the node through an afferent lymphatic. It deposits in the subcapsular sinusoids and then it goes and makes a, a confluence and involves the hilum. And there are three types of surgery for the lymph nodes, either lymph node dissection, and this has an increased morbidity. We have sentinel lymph node biopsy, which is the current standard of care. And this is when there are clinically negative lymph nodes or there is targeted axillary dissection, and this is done by that we as radiologists put markers in the suspicious lymph nodes. So the imaging modalities include all of these, of course, but we're going to talk about ultrasound because it's widely available and it is low cost and it does have um, very good results. Uh, on mammography, it's difficult to assess the lymph nodes, however, this is how a normal lymph node would look on mammography, and this is the abnormal lymph node. They would be dense, no lucent hyla, and can have calcifications. Another example of calcifications in the lymph nodes. Uh, the cortex, of course, should be uniformly thin and smooth, and the lymph node should be oval with a fatty hilum. These are examples of normal lymph nodes. And the criteria, Dr. Iman went through most of the criteria, but let's just revise that abnormal lymph nodes would have a round shape, thick cortex, hilar indentation, extra uh, non-hilar uh, vascularity, extra capsular infiltration, they can be amalgamated, they can have calcifications. We should comment on the size, the level, and the number, okay? Uh, I'm not going to go through the pathological uh, abnormalities on imaging because we've, Dr. Iman went through them. But this is a very nice sign called the Mickey Mouse sign when you have uh, the ear of the Mickey Mouse coming out of the cortex like this. And, okay, now the levels. This is a level 2 lymph node. And here these are level 3 lymph nodes. And here are some examples of level one, level two, and level three. Okay, we can see their relationship to the muscles. And the internal mammary chain should be done at the parasternal region. So this is an image of the normal parasternal chain and on the one on the right shows the internal mammary lymph node. And by MRI, MRI shows them clearly, of course. Interventional procedures, Dr. Stelim will go through them, and of course, biopsy is the method of choice by ultrasound. Uh, Doppler will help us avoiding the large vessels, and in our institution, we use core biopsy. We do not use fine needle for the lymph nodes or for the mass. And of course, we need ultrasound to help us do the biopsy, the clip, and the wire localization. So in regards to anatomic staging, these are the, um, all the criteria that we follow from stage zero to stage four. 
And this is again the pathological staging and what concerns us here in the pathological staging is the number of lymph nodes. As I said, we should comment on them in our report. And let's do this test. Okay, here we have a uh, abnormality seen here on the left side. We can see an asymmetry with some skin thickening. And on ultrasound, we have a mass that is about, I think it was about uh, four centimeters. And we have as well multiple uh, level one lymph nodes. So this would be a T2, N1, and it had no metastasis, so it was an M0. So this is a stage 2B. Okay, so the take home message is that the TNM stage can be uh, labeled C for clinical, P for pathology, Y for new adjuvant. Imaging is very important for staging and treatment planning. Uh, imaging is important to help us decide if this is going for conservative surgery versus mastectomy, and we talked about all the criteria of indications and contraindications of conservation. P, you, when you talk about the tumor size, we mean the P, which is the largest size. Ignore the invasive, the only, ignore the non-invasive component in this but you have to mention it in your report for the surgery. And lymph nodes talk about the number and level and about also any extensions of the mass. Okay, finally, I invite you to our next conference in February, 7 to 8 February. Please take a note of uh, the website and uh, so you can know all the updates. We're going to have an MRI and intervention uh, workshop and also pelvic imaging workshops. So I hope to see you there. And this is the Instagram account, Breast Imaging Egypt. We'll have all the updates of the new uh, upcoming courses in uh, Egypt or in, the, in Cairo and outside Cairo and all the regions. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nuran, for this uh, very well-presented uh, lecture. Um, any questions to Dr. Nuran? We have only a few seconds before we see. have our last lecture. Any questions, Dr. Nuran? Okay. Now I uh, would love to present uh, Dr. Ashraf Salim, my dear colleague. Dr. Ashraf Salim needs no introduction, actually. Uh, he's a professor of radiology and the former head of radiology department, Cairo University is the head of the Radiology Committee Presidential Initiative on Women's Health, and the, he is the president of the Egyptian Society of uh, Women's Health. Dr. Salim will be presenting breast ultrasound-guided interventional procedures. And I think everybody in, uh, in this room knows uh, that Dr. Ashraf had his skills to deliver to everyone who is working in uh, breast imaging. With my pleasure, Dr. Ashraf. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Dorea, my dear colleague, my dear friend, uh, for such a very nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, you make me <laughs> blush, by the way. But anyhow, صباح الخير عليكم جميعا. أنا عارف إن أنا آخر واحد في ال في السيشن. قبل ما أبتدي بس أحب أشكر الدكتورة نوران حسين عشان هي ال organizing this session in this uh, Onco Egypt, which is the the Talit Muqtamar Bitamil for Onco Egypt. And as I eyes by the Iznuku Kidabli Mabtidi, Irayuku no of Kida, what for Kida Sanya, we stretch our legs Kida, Shannon Shaif Kida Nasib Tadit, one of them, yeah, and Tadit and I'm sure. Ayo, Ayo, stretch, stretch, Ayo, Yalla, go on, stretch, stretch, cool stretch, Ayo, Ayo, ma, Yalla. Anyhow, thank you. you. May be seated. Thank you. Yani, my topic today will be on the ultrasound-guided interventional procedures, which is a really a very, very important subject to discuss in in 25 minutes. But I'll try my best to uh, show you most of the applications and how to do it briefly. I know that most, if not all, who are attending today are radiologists. Anybody is not a radiologist here? Okay, good. Uh, let's start with the first. The interventional procedures are, as you, you can see here, we have the core biopsies, the vacuum-assisted biopsies, 
the wire localization, the clip marker placement, cyst aspiration, and lastly, the tumor ablation. We'll start with guided biopsies. How do we perform biopsy with the different imaging modalities? As you can see here, we have the ultrasound, stereotactic, and MRI. MRI is not, uh, pre yeah, not available uh, on a large scale in Egypt, maybe only maybe one place that has it, but otherwise it's not available. And the stereotactic is more available, but still uh, very few centers that have this facility stereotactic. So we are left with the ultrasound guided, which is really the, the thing that you have to learn and practice a lot because this is an essential and integral part of a radiologist during her or his work. Before we start, fine needle aspiration cytology it has been mentioned repeatedly. It's done with a very thin needle and as you can see here, 20 to 25 gauge and it just takes some cells, few cells. These are not um, practiced anymore except in very few centers which I really don't advise you to do it anymore because it is it needs very high skills not from the radiologist but also from and the interpreting cytopathologist so we abandoned using this except in fluid aspiration this is as you can see here فيديو مش شغال طيب استنى شوية يعني الدنيا باظت خالص استنى شوية حاضر دي هنا ده فيديو بالاستريتنج ال اه هيشتغل اهو كويس شايفين الثين فيري ثين نيدل كامينج اون انت رجعت لي على الاولانيه لي اوكي This is the needle. Okay, okay, from here. And the you're not working on the video. Mouse. Oh. هنا بتحتاج في الفاين نيدل اسبريشن ان انت تعمل يعني ريبيتد لايك ذس وانت ساكنج الليجن ذا سيم تكنيك ممكن نبقى نعمله بعد كده في السيس اسبريشن ويتش از ذا اونلي ثينج ذات اي يوز فور ذا فاين نيدل سايتولوجي ان اسبريت ذا سيس از يو كان سي هير تيل يو كان واتش ذس تيل ذا سيس توتالي كولابسز Cyst aspiration, if it's clear fluid, will cyst totally collapse, you don't have to send it to cytology. Okay? Otherwise, if it is sanguineous and the cyst has more, some echoes inside or focal thickening, you, you send this to the pathology. Ultrasound guided needle biopsy. The core biopsy is the really the very important. And we have different types of needles. The semi-automatic needle, as well as the gun. As we can see here, these are the semi-automatic and this is the gun. And this is using 14 gauge needle. Please, somebody would say, can we use 16? No. Can you use 18? Definitely no. Why is that? Because breast cancers are really hard. And in order to take a good sample, you have to use the 14 gauge needle. Not only that, but for the pathologist, to get the, uh, uh, 
the the what do you call it the endocrinal receptors you have to take a bigger sample the vacuum assisted now لا ما هو دلوقتي الدنيا معلش ان شاء الله ربنا يصلح الحال ان شاء الله الفاكيوم اسيستد ذا سيم تكنيك بس بقى بيبقى معايا فاكيوم بطريقه زي ما هنشوفها كده ودي يوجوالي وي يوز ات فور ذا كالسيفيكيشنز اند سام تايمز فور بيناين تيومر اكسيجن اف ذي ار ليس ذان 2 سنتيمتر طيب ايه بقى ميزه الكور بايوبسي نيدل بالالترا ساوند فاستر مور كومفورتبل فور ذا بيشنتس اوف كورس best to use it for lymph node biopsies calcifications if you do it for calcifications you have to do a specimen radiography to make sure that the sample contains the calcification and of course you have to use a high quality ultrasound scanner and probe you have to get a, an informed written consent from the patient explaining to her the procedure and complications that might uh, arouse, arise and of course you get a bleeding and coagulation profile before This is how this is a bigger lesion, and you can see here that the needle is coming from the right upper hand corner and going into the needle. As you can see now, the needle has to, we will open the needle like you see here. There is a cutting chamber in there, and then the fire will happen now. Oh, that's the fire, and then you withdraw the needle. Another smaller one, the same principle, even if you, you can make the same even if very small lesions less than five millimeter in diameter okay the ultrasound position patients usually lying on her back if it is in the superior or lateral or inferior part patient you can make it make her oblique a little bit on the medial aspect it's supine do the skin entry just one centimeter to the edge of the probe, maybe two centimeter if it is a deeper lesion. And of course you do the local anesthetic using lidnocaine 1% with or without epinephrine. And how much to inject, it really depends on the, 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 the tolerance of the patient. Sometimes the patients are usually scared and frightened so that you may inject more. Or if she has a very fibrotic breast, you, you need to inject uh, more local. After local anesthetic is done, usually we inject four to five mil mils at most. We put a, a, a snip by a scalpel at the needle site so that because of the bigger needle uh, we need. And then you go with the needle targeting the lesion But the golden rule here, always, always stay parallel to the probe as well as to the chest wall. Golden rule, don't forget that. And of course, when you reach the margin of the lesion, you can then fire the needle. Images, please take images to record what you, do, what you are doing. Pre, during, and post firing. We usually take two, four to six Uh, samples, each sample would be two centimeter long. So five samples would be adequate. Put it in formalin, 10%, not more than 10%, because it will be overfixed when it goes to the pathologist. And of course, in the books it's written that you have to put a tissue marker after biopsy, but because of the limited financial issues here, We, unfortunately, we don't put clip in each case. This is another case. Following the same steps, same steps. We take the needle, go to the lesion, and then fire. A smaller lesion, much, much smaller lesion. Same concept. And you will, you will not be able to get the expertise except if you do more and more cases. This is very important, but don't forget the golden rule. Always stay parallel to the chest wall. Special situations. Yes, there are some difficulties, so I will just put some pearls that you may uh, sometimes remember. 
chess wall parallel to the chess wall. Never ever forget this uh, fact. Now, if the knee, if the lesion is deep, you have to go into a larger portion of the breast, but you can dissect this with many entries yeah, like this, or you can have the uh, approach, as we said, one to two centimeters from the edge of the probe. You can go directly deep like that, and then make it parallel to the probe so that you can see what exactly you are going to. You angle it. Sometimes lesions very close to the chest wall or to the skin, you can make the hydrodissection. You inject some saline between the lesion and the skin or the chest wall so that you create a space. It will push the, needle, the lesion away. Dense nodular breasts, sometimes it's very difficult. You, when you introduce, even in normal tissues, it's very fibrotic and very difficult. Don't be scared. I can see that most women in my department at the teaching, they are scared going through because it's tough. But because they are, you are mostly women, I'm not saying. <laughs> your, your hands are quite weaker a little bit and you're scared in your, in your beginning of the career. Yes, this is true. And I don't want to see who, I don't want to tell you who. <laughs> but anyhow, this is for the training. I mean, uh, take care that you are facing a resistance. Now you can ah, like that and then the needle may overshoot and go into the thorax. So you have to be a really a controlled thrust, short thrusts like this, okay? Uh, okay, neither is, uh, okay. Sometimes when you inject the local anesthetic, the fluid of the anesthetic um, hinders or masks the edge of the lesion, if, especially if it's very small. Don't be panicked, just relax, take some time, wait, and then try it again, the, the anesthetic will disperse. Mobile masses, sometimes with fibroadenomas especially, you have to fix it with the hand, holding the probe, and then you go with the needle. When not to use the gun, chest wall lesions close to the chest wall, axilla, and whenever there is an implant. And the gun is best used in hard masses. Post-procedure, compression for five minutes, sterile dressings, and patient in a, yeah, instructed about the, uh, she might experience some pain and bruising. Give her broad spectrum antibiotic if needed, and don't forget to put uh, labeling on the specimen. Vacuum assisted uh, breast biopsy, it's the same process, but it's, the needle goes behind, posterior to the lesion, and then the vacuum will suck the tissue, as in the uh, slide, the other one, and then fire, the vacuum will again take the sample away and then repeat it again and again. This is the vacuum assisted breast biopsy. When not to use it, implants and axil. When to use it, special in calcifications, complexes, intraductal masses, and suspicious asymmetry. This is one of the Let's see if it will work or not. Oh. Oh. Ah. Okay, now you can see the needle and the cutting. It's cutting the lesion and then repeat it again and again and again till you remove the whole uh, mass. And this is a fibroadenoma, of course. Don't use vacuum assisted to, to remove or to make, to, to get all of the lesion if it's malignant. Don't do that. It's not indicated at all. 
at least five to six samples. And then you have to write an, a covering letter to the pathologist stating what did you do exactly. The method that you adopted, the type of the lesion, the site, size, and location, the birads. Most pathologists understand the birads, by the way. The number of cores, length of each core of the core, history of previous surgery, or new, or new adjuvant therapy and any complications that might have happened. And when you review their pathology results, concordant or discordant, if still pathology comes with benign features and you still suspect that it's malignant, please communicate directly with the uh, pathologist. Wire localization, same principle, put a wire into the lesion in if, it's, if it is non-palpable or post-new uh, uh, adjuvant. Of course, you have to review all the images and uh, usually we perform this just pre-operatively. These are the types of different wires. We have the non-retractable copans wire on the left-hand side of your screen and the retractable wires, Homer's wire, which is you can retract it and reinsert it again. And this is the wire in place. Again, you have to check because you will write what you will be expl explaining to the surgeon exactly where is the wire. And this is the sample, okay. Sometimes wires are put, many wires, we do it for bracketing, called bracketing. If the calcifications are widespread, we bracket them. As we can see here, there are four wires bracketing the uh, calcifications, as you can see. Clip markers, usually, as I said, it's after needle biopsies or if new adjuvant therapy is planned, because sometimes after the new adjuvant therapy, the tumor vanishes. Tumor vanishes so that all what's left is the clip. So later on, we'll put a wire to locate the clip for the surgeon to do his, the, his surgery. And this is the, uh, the applicator, clip marker. And there are different types of shapes of the clips that are available in the market, all serve with the same objective. This is a one with the clip marker. This is the most common clip marker, like, your, like the ribbon. And this is by ultrasound. Sometimes if your ultrasound unit is not that good, it's very difficult to locate the wire. In this case, we can resort to stereotactic uh, localization. And this is the wire on a clip for preoperative localization. Of course, as I said, if you cannot lo localize the clip by ultrasound, we do stereotactic. I won't go into much of the details of the stereotactic. There are many different, prone and upright. And of course, we uh, stereotactic biopsies can be done also. And this is the wire localization by stereotactic biopsy. Okay, the last uh, issue in my presentation, which is quite, not quite new, but it's now gaining some popularity worldwide. Although, of course, surgeons and oncologists still are totally against it, but many papers have been published uh, demonstrating the importance, especially for older women who have uh, poor status and uh, they, they reject surgery or any new adjuvant therapy. But of course, these are uh, having, uh, with the surgery, have more morbidity in such elderly patients. And therefore, as I said, there are percutaneous minimally invasive techniques were developed and adopted to treat patients with stage one or two, so early stages, breast cancer who are unfit for surgery 
or refuse it. And the preliminary results are quite encouraging. Let's go. What are the tumor, different tumor ablation methods? We have the radio frequency, we have the microwave, the laser, the cryo, the irreversible electroporation, and the high intensity focused ultrasound. You are familiar with some of these issues as because, for example, radio frequencies, we know it for the liver cancer, we've been adopted many times, but now it's coming into the breast. Its mechanism relies actually on radio frequency uh, uh, pulse after one or more electrodes is introduced into the uh, breast lesion. And these electrodes generate waves that create movement among the cells of the tumor. And this movement would do friction between the different ions increasing the tissue temperature, almost reaching 60 to 70 degrees, which really leads to coagulative necrosis of the malignant tissue. And this is the apparatus for the radiofrequency ablation. The second is the cryoablation. Cryo meaning freezing. So it's, it induces cell death by freezing through circulating liquid nitrogen or rapid decompression of the argon gas. Now the freezing process starts with the activation of one or more cryoprobes put together at the center of the tumor. Here we have to put it at the center of the tumor along its longest axis to optimize the maximal ice ball. It creates an ice ball along the uh, probe. This is the, 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 the apparatus for the cryo, and on the right side you can see the ice ball that really uh, in, involves all the tumor tissue. The microwave ablation is another modality. It has some advantages over radio frequency, which is shorter time of, of application, higher intratumoral uh, temperature and a larger area of necrosis. But as I've been saying, it's effective, especially effective for tissues that have high water concentration. The breast, by the way, uh, the tumor cells prefer are preferentially destroyed in relative sparing of the normal fatty tissue that has lower water content. Yani fatty tissue, low, water content is not low, but the tumor water content is low. There is a kind of preferential uh, ablation for tumor cells. It's much more painful than radio frequency with cryo, and in the end, we need to do conscious anesthesia. We need to have anesthesia in this situation. The apparatus of uh, laser ablation, the young bardo, in the creates heat men el friction between cells, and this is the apparatus. A reversible electroporation is the, 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 the newest modality using the nano knife. Um, it, it delivers high voltage into the cells and up to 3 kV, and then the cell membrane will make some pores. It will be destroyed in a micro pores. It's called, uh, the process called poration. That's where the name came, comes from, and eventually leads to loss of homeostasis. And this is the apparatus. Uh, lastly is the HIFO, which is used in many, treating many cancers. You, all are acquainted with the HIFO, but it's now being used in the breast cancer as well, producing coagulative necrosis and with a rise of temperature up to 50 to 95 uh, Celsius. And this is the HIFO, uh, uh, it's a big machine. So take home message, three types of guided biopsy, the MAMO, ultrasound and MRI, it's the fastest is the ultrasound. Easiest, definitely is the easiest. 
and should be performed by well-trained radiologists? Yes, you have to be well-trained. Success depends on two main things. You fix the mass in view, and the needle should always be parallel to the probe and the chest wall. Abandon using fine needle aspiration cytology except for cysts only, and vacuum biopsy mainly for microcalcifications, and of course you have to document all what you're doing in the interventional work, and ablation techniques can potentially reduce treatment burden, morbidity, and improve cosmetic outcome of the patients with early stage breast cancer that reject surgery or neoadjuvant therapy and should not be used to treat cancer, as I said, except for those patients. Um, I would also like to, rem to remind you, as Dr. Noran just uh, told us about the upcoming conference in the 7th and 8th of February, 2024, we'll be waiting for you all to attend. And at the end, I thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf, for uh, this is a very informative lecture. Thank you very much. I would like to thank very much the organizer, Dr. Noran Hussein, the attendees, the lecturers, and my co-chair, Dr. Mahilal. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you.